speaker of this evening. Uh, he is a renowned member of the Engineering Institution of Zambia. He's also a member of Society for Automation Instrumentation, Mechatronics and Control, IEEE, and a Swedish in Engineers uh, Association. Our speaker is also a dynamic researcher at the Lule University of Technology in Sweden. Without further ado, I would like to hand over the screen to him. Over to you, Mr. Enoch Malinga. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, uh, depending on where you are getting me from. Uh, my name is uh, Inoki Murenga, um, basically based in Zambia, and I uh, also alternate with uh, being in Sweden. I will give a talk basically which is uh education, African business, and entrepreneurship. Uh, having been introduced, basically, I'm a former lecturer at the School of Engineering, uh, which is the Copper Belt University, the second largest university in Zambia. Uh, since I left, I've continued to help with the final year uh, projects, uh, which is uh, basically to foster research, uh, in power quality, uh, renewable energy, that is solar and wind. Uh, when I left CBU in 2017, the following year, I founded uh, a company which is North Voltage Engineering. Uh, the focus uh, basically is to help engineering students uh, with uh, the development. And then going backwards, I've also been uh, a scholar of the Swedish Institute uh, Scholarship, uh, which is a prestigious scholarship uh, uh, that encourages uh, the growth of education with a view to developing our developing uh, countries. Since 2010, after two years of my development in industry, have been mentoring uh, engineering professionals, that is starting with the, those who do trade test, technicians, technologists, uh, including uh, engineers. At the moment, I'm a researcher at Rurio University of Technology in Sweden, where I focus mainly in renewable energy integration and the power quality. So on the left, uh, basically is a picture of a grass patched house, which is mostly characteristic of uh, most African uh, countries. But then we are moving uh, towards the development, which is to move away from uh, the problems that are poised with the the underdevelopment that has hit Africa. So some of the challenges and problems that Africa face are basically, uh, one of them is the energy deficit. Um, earlier on, one of the speakers from uh, one African country in West Africa had mentioned uh, power had, had been disrupted. That is one of the problems that Africa faces today. But again, to bridge the gap and eradicate the deficit of energy, uh, there is education that is there. So when we talk of education, it comes in two folds. The first part is you get the formal education that is needed for you to acquire knowledge that you can apply uh, in areas of interest. The second type of education, which is very critical to development, is the skills set. 
Uh, basically, when one graduates from college, when one graduates from university, they need to get the hands-on experience. Uh, in the mining sector where I worked for some years, we called that the graduate development program. So when I was the lecturer at CBU, I identified this problem uh, because you find that most of the companies, uh, most of the tech would require graduates with the formal qualification to have skill set that are needed for them to get uh, formal employment. So these two challenges basically are what led to the foundation of North Voltage Engineering. One of it is to collaborate with the university to uh, supervise final year uh, projects. Then second, when the graduates graduate from the uh, colleges and the universities, then they need to get the skill set. And the skill set of interest to me and uh, probably to some of the challenges that Africa and Zambia faces uh, today uh, with regards to energy uh, entails that we need to implement what we have. Uh, Africa has got a potential for solar energy. It has also a potential for wind energy. But then what is missing is uh, the right skill set that is there to bring about innovation, to bring about solutions that can bring uh, Africa from where it is to the next stage. Because most of the industries that will need to be implemented in Africa, the manufacturing industry, agriculture, farming, demands energy, they need energy. And then from time in memorial, especially for Zambia, we've mostly depended on hydro, uh, which when the rainfall patterns are bad, then it has got an impact on how much is generated by the stations. So these uh, two problems basically are one of them that uh, encouraged me to, to found uh, the company. So the solution or simple solution which uh, I founded in 2018, which I still support up to date, uh, basically, one of them is to mentor uh, students with the interest in power quality, the interest in solar energy, the interest with wind energy. When you look at the cycle of all these technologies, they have got the uh, ability to bring about new businesses and they have got the ability to bring about ownership from uh, the graduates instead of them waiting for uh, jobs, white collar jobs, or waiting for engineer positions with the right uh, formal uh, knowledge and the right skill set, then we can have these graduates come up with innovations in these fields that can bring about startups uh, in uh, wind energy, startup in solar energy. And one, one of uh, the scores of the company is that it has been able to uh, supervise, mentor, and provide skills to some of the graduates which, who are now working in other companies and some have set up their own renewable companies which are contributing to the development of them. And also in addition to that, I continue to help with the supervision of uh, projects which are more uh, which have got interest in the renewable energy. One example is that we've, we've actually come up with the, a proposal to, to start uh, building and testing of small wind turbines that can be used in agriculture. So once we build the prototype and these are able to provide the much needed energy for farmers and small scale businesses, then we expect some businesses in this uh, sector can grow up in the next two to five years. So as, as after finding, after uh, uh, establishing the North Voltage Engineering, which by now is 
an operation company. There are other companies that have sprung up, which are also within the renewable energy. Some have combined other sectors. So I continue to support the upcoming entrepreneurs in solar energy with providing the new skill set, the new knowledge. As a researcher based in the Scandinavia, one thing that has basically motivated me is that Sweden has got uh, normally experienced snow in most parts of, of the year. And then the other parts we've got the spring, autumn. But the generation of uh, energy from solar actually outweighs what is uh, in Zambia. Uh, so that, that has motivated me to push so much, especially uh, the, the upcoming graduates, those who leave uh, universities, and also to some extent, some that are already in the field to take up this challenge. Because in Zambia, on average, we've got about four to five hours of sunlight. And of course, other days, which are like, if we take up to August, September, October, we've got even eight to nine hours of sunlight. So we, with this motivation of having enough irradiation higher than other countries, we are still lagging behind in the sector of energy. So once we have more of uh, young people taking up the challenge to provide solutions, these solutions can be for residential solutions to uh, generate power for the grid and also solution to provide for farming because farming is again linked up with providing food for the nation and also providing other opportunities that are linked to the industry. So that is one sector that is there, support the upcoming uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, try to build up some of these things from scratch. Of course, with the, the networking that I have, I still continue to work with the, some of my former colleagues from India, some of my former colleagues in China, to try to come up with solutions that are basically based for Africa. These solutions that will provide what is needed in terms of energy. And once we have got this technology coming in and also we've got the startups, then we can have the, the, the business aspect of, of uh, most African countries growing up. Because it's, it's, it's from the idea and also providing of a solution that is needed that uh, businesses and companies can actually come up from, uh, from that case. So from there, you can see that uh, we have a group of uh, young people actually engaging themselves in providing solutions for residential uh, people in areas where there is no electricity with solar panels, inverters, and batteries so that uh, the livelihood can improve. In addition, also, uh, there are solutions that are basically triggered to do with the farming and, and agriculture. Because for so many years in Zambia, we've uh, basically uh, uh, depended much on the mining. But then you find that the metals, the, the, the prices of metals normally change from year to year. But then agriculture has got the potential to feed Zambia and also export to other neighboring countries. Zambia has got eight countries that surrounds it. So uh, if, if agriculture grows, the sector grows, we produce more and we can export. That is also a foreign export uh, ENA and also more businesses uh, in terms of processing of food and others can come up. So this, this technology has got the potential to bring about more businesses, more entrepreneurship, and which means that we can also create a lot of jobs for the many graduates who, who are leaving university every year. So basically on the long-term goals with regards to education, uh, business, and entrepreneurship, uh, uh, I expect to continue with support of uh, the engineering development and training in Zambia. Of course, there are others who support. I've got Zambia in the diaspora, in the 
uh, in the USA, as uh, other Zambians in Europe who have come up and uh, like the idea because we need people who are trained both formally with the education and also with skill set. And then we need to provide solutions for our problems. Once we provide solutions, then this can uh, motivate the growth of businesses, the growth of entrepreneurship and creation of more jobs. And we can develop more from having areas without electricity to areas with electricity. And then, uh, Together with the, the directors of North Voten Engineering, we've been developing short courses with regards to solar power. Uh, when we just founded the company, we ran a few courses, uh, but now it's been almost three years. So we are improving uh, the course that we had run with regard with the solar power so that it can be inclusive, not only target people who are living colleges and universities, but also inclusive of those living high school, so that maybe they can find the technology instilling it, the technology, giving them an impetus to get more knowledge and provide solutions. Because as developing uh, countries, as youths, because we are the leaders of tomorrow, we are the billionaires of tomorrow. So we must uh, get the, the, the needed knowledge to, to provide the solutions that are needed. And then in addition, we again uh, continue with the, trying to build small wind turbines for, for farms. Uh, basically in this case, it's, it's, it's uh, community farms, uh, development farms, and uh, and also small scale and subsistence farming. So that, in addition to solar that is coming in, yeah, wind can bridge the gap because with wind there can be production in the night when solar is not there. So once we have got these two technologies supporting each other in agriculture and farming, we can have more African businesses coming up. We can have uh the, the the implementation of technology uh, other speakers have spoken about other ideas that can be inculcated in the ideas that you have seen can bring about more african businesses uh coming up and also a lot of entrepreneurs uh to come up so also there is room for co collaborations because uh, as Africa, we can't develop this alone. We need the partnership of others who have been there. Of course, we understand India. Uh, we've got there are a lot of uh, manufacturing uh, companies. We can get the knowledge, the ideas of how these can also be implemented in African countries. That is possible, but this cannot be possible without the collaborations. You have got to network, you have got to collaborate, you have got to mix up with the knowledge that you have with others. And then support education, that is the formal education uh, uh, in universities and also push for the introduction of entrepreneurship. When I was a student at university, this wasn't a course, but now it has got to be a course because Apart from formal employment, there is also informal employment that can bring about development, develop the African businesses and bring about more entrepreneurship. Thank you very much for the presentation, uh, for listening to my presentation. And if you have any questions, any clarification, I can be reached on that email. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I'm Sushma, member of YUCI. I 